Sirina Shanika, a software engineer from uh, WSO2 App Manager team. Uh, today we are going to walk you through the new features and enhancements added with WSO2 App Manager 110 and uh, meanwhile we will talk about the already available features also. Okay. Uh, in today's session we are going to have a brief introduction to App Manager its uh, component architecture and its features available along with a demonstration on uh, basic features. Uh, then we will talk about the newly added features like uh, tenanted stores, uh, tenanted sharing, uh, tenanted uh, subscription etc. Uh, with, uh, along with a new uh, demonstration on uh, newly added features. Okay, um, <coughs> what exactly is App Manager? Uh, WSO2 App Manager is a 100% open source product which has been built on the in intention of uh, catering all aspects of application management features like uh, application publishing, managing life cycles, app subscription, authentication, access control and uh, so many other things in a uh, more simplified way. Uh, it provides a unique one-stop store one-stop store solution with uh, centralized access to multiple web and mobile application which is highly scalable okay <coughs> app manager comes with four major components those are publisher app store app gateway and idp app publisher is a web interface for app providers to publish web applications mobile applications manage their life cycles uh, share documentations and uh, visualize statistics on app usage uh, usage and quality. App Store is the end user portal where the end users can uh, can come and sign up, uh, sub, uh, discover applications, uh, subscribe to them and access them. Meanwhile, they can uh, rate and evaluate applications. <coughs> applications. Um, App Gateway is dedicated to manage the application invocations. Basically, it acts as a simple app proxy that intercepts app requests and uh, it applies policies such as throttling security checks before bypassing the app call into the backend. Meanwhile, it gathers statistics on app usage, response time. Uh, identity provider component is there to uh, provision and uh, manage single sign-on. Okay, uh, then I will briefly uh, dis discuss the features available with App Manager. Uh, basically, uh, App Manager is a centralized app store where you can manage multiple mobile and web, web applications in a single place. Uh, in another perspective, uh, it acts as an application gateway proxy, which is responsible for securing, managing, and scaling application calls. Uh, and single sign on, it is one of the significant. Uh, one of the most significant features in App Manager because uh, <coughs> it applies a security layer <coughs> on top of uh, all published applications to handle uh, sign on, uh, which eases the end user life, life since they, not, they do not have a struggle with different passwords anymore. Uh, and every application that we created in App Manager has a life cycle, and we can manage the life cycle by promoting or demoting life cycle states. And you, you can restrict the visibility of a published published application in apps too based on end user role. Uh, throttling is there to manage request traffic with rate limiting. In other words, uh, we can limit number of hits on a web application within a given period of time. App Manager uh, facilitates role based or SACML based resource authorization also. Okay. Uh, now, when we are going to talk about subscription management, there are two types of uh, subscription options uh, are available in App Manager. Uh, those are um, individual and uh, enterprise subscription. Uh, individual users can come and sign up in App Store and make subscription, make subscription and access the applications. Uh, other than that, a set of users which has been uh, authenticated from an identity provider can uh, make subscription uh, collectively that we, we call it enterprise subscription. Uh, uh, and uh, with the integration of uh, WSO2 Business Activity Monitor or Google Analytics, we can collect statistics on app usage, response time, uh, subscription, etc. and uh, analyze them and later we can visualize them in a, a publisher.
okay, okay. Uh, apart from that uh, the end users can comment or rate they are based on their user experience or app providers can share documentations uh, like user guides uh, so uh, apart from that uh, app manager provides workflow management uh, where we can attach uh, custom workflows with a publishing a subscription and self sign up processes uh, and we can manage the workflow with uh, integration of WSO2 WS business, business process server. Uh, Multi-tenancy support has been improved in new release and uh, tenant sharing is a newly added feature uh, which provides uh, isolated view of app management for different tenants. Uh, this feature will be discussed in detail uh, in the upcoming slides okay uh, now uh, let's move into the mobile applications uh, uh, so i will talk about the features available for mobile apps uh, in app manager we can publish uh, three different types of mobile applications those are ios android and uh, web app based uh, mobile apps apart from that we can publish applications under categories of uh, enterprise or public apps enterprise apps are the mobile apps that we manage internally within app manager and uh, public apps are the applications available in external mobile stores like uh, iTunes Google Play stores uh, and uh, for mobile apps also we have a, a lifecycle management uh, feature so it is similar to the web app lifecycle management so I won't go detail into that uh, once the apps are published the end users can discover them and install them into the connected mobile devices or they can directly download mobile apps uh, to mobile devices and uh, enterprise subscription uh, is there for mobi mobile apps also and uh, we can uh, integrate WSO2 uh, mobile device manager with uh, app manager to provide a uh, device management solution uh, apart from that uh, we have support for uh, plug-in third-party device management solution with app manager also so um, now uh, let's have a quick demonstration on basic features uh, in app manager okay. Uh, okay now I will demonstrate how to create uh, an application how to publish them and uh, how to access them in app store okay uh, now uh, we have to go to the uh, publisher web application and you need to log in as a uh, you as a publisher user which has the permission of uh, publishing and uh, creating applications Okay. now we are in the uh, web application landing page those are the already available web applications now if you want to create a new web app you have to go to web application tab and click on add new web application uh, in order to add a new web app uh, you need to provide a set of details now uh, here uh, there are a few mandatory fields and apart from that we can uh, uh, the, the rest of the fields are optional so let's see how to create a web app here now uh, my web application name is uh, wso2 app and we have to provide a display name uh, which will be appear in uh, app store we have to provide a context and version okay and uh, we have to select a transport uh, we can select http or https and in here we have to provide the actual web application uh, backend URL you can give us a sm uh, small description on the app and here you have to provide uh, thumbnail and banner images uh, which has to be uh, appeared in uh, app store and we can add tags for categorization okay those are the basic uh, fields available for an web application uh, apart from that we can uh, define some policies there are two types of policies global policies and resource policies uh, in global policies there are a few options i will describe them briefly uh, so if we tick on allow anonymous access this access uh, this application would be uh, accessible 
in app store for anonymous users you do not need to subscribe for this application to access now if, if we uh, enable uh, skip gateway uh, a gateway proxy won't be created for this particular application so uh, uh, the application invocations uh, invoca inv invocation calls won't be go through the app gateway now if we enable restrict visibility we have to provide a role name here now if we add a, if we added a role name here this particular paper would be dis, uh, would be visible to the users with this particular role only uh, and uh, to enable single logout you have to uh, uh, tick on this and provide logout url and if you want to publish statistics you have to enable this and uh, subscription availability is the latest feature we have added with uh, release 110 uh, <coughs> So uh, this feature will be discussed in detail in, in the upcoming demonstration. So uh, now I would, uh, uh, for now I would uh, select the current tenant only option. So the app subscription would be available for this particular tenant. And we can define web application resources. Uh, so there are uh, there are already already there are a few uh, resources uh, defined. Uh, and uh, apart from that we can add new resources here and uh, we have we can add uh, access policies to these resources uh, if you want to add a new access policy you have to go to uh, new resource policy button and create a policy here you can uh, uh, define uh, policies uh, based on throttling uh, authorization anonymous access etc now uh, i will create the application now here uh, the application is uh, successfully created but it's in created state uh, if we want to uh, approve this application and publish we have to promote the lifecycle state now uh, i'm going to uh, promote this to review state now it is in in review state now uh, i'm going to approve this application now it is approved and uh, I am going to publish it. So this would be uh, appeared in App Store. Okay. Now uh, we have uh, successfully published the application. And uh, now we have to go to App Store uh, to subscribe and access this. So I am browsing App Store web app. Okay. Now you can see the uh, published web application here. Now, if you want to access this, you have to subscribe first. Uh, to subscribe, you need to log in as a user with subscri subscriber role. My username store user, and I provide password. Okay. Now, um, now we are in App Store. We have successfully logged in, and we have to go to the application and we are in the landing page if you want to subscribe you have to hit on subscribe me button okay now we are successfully subscribed if you want to access this application you need to hit on this uh, web app this get a url or you, you need to access this url separately okay now we have accessed the app successfully uh, and uh, that's uh, that is the main uh, flow in app manager um, up to uh, application access and uh, apart from that we can uh, 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 add user reviews documentations etc uh, and uh, that's all for the uh, basic features in app manager now I'm, I'm going to hand over the session to Janan and then to continue uh, with the rest of uh, features Thank you Tilini and in the next set of slides and demo we are going to discuss the new features added to product 110 release. WSO2 products support multi-tenancy out of the box. The goal of multi-tenancy is to maximize resource sharing by allowing multiple users. 
to log in and use single server at the same time so each uh, user is given the experience of using his or her own server rather than shared environment multi tenancy ensures optimal performance of systems resources such as memory and hardware and also secures each tenant's personal data let's try to understand the need of multi tenancy for app manager with a simple use case let's say an organization has a few departments such as engineering accounting finance and all these departments may have a set of apps for the department specific task employees in the particular department may develop and use their own apps also in some cases they may need to share their apps with other department as well for example the hr department can expose employee details app to all other departments so all the department can access employee app with the entire organize within the entire organization for this example we can map the tenant to a department wso2 app manager has multi tenancy support for gateway publisher and store component from the release 100 but in the previous release there was a drawback in the multi tenancy of store because when a user log in the user was taken to his or her own tenant store so the logged in user did not have a way to browse and use the public app published by the other tenants this roadback has been overcome in the release 110 with the concept of public store where public store is a store of multiple tenant stores when there are tenants and user visit the app store he or she will be taken to the public store page from there user can select and browse each tenant stores when the user browses tenant store from public store each tenant store will have an isolated view as shown in the image and only the apps related to that tenant will be displayed to him or her if a user want to access a web app from another tenant user should first log in to his or her tenant store and then he or she can come back and browse the other tenant stores and access the public apps with the use of public store user can browse public apps of the other tenants but there is another use case where one tenant wants to advertise his app in some other tenant stores so users in other tenant stores can easily find the app without browsing all tenant stores for example hr department want to share the employee detail app with all other department so publish of hr department can publish the app in the store and publish an advertising app on the other department stores so users in the other department stores can find the app while they browse their own stores in order to uh, do that hr tenant should use publish to external store feature by configuring external store external stores this feature is available only for web app currently let's see how to configure the external stores in order to configure the external stores we should log in to the carbon console as a at tenant admin and we should browse and open the uh, external app store configuration and we have to add the following configuration let me explain the elements of the configuration store url which represent the url of the store where the where actually app is published external store app store element this represent an external store we can add one or many external stores but id attribute should be unique for each stores display name this will be used in the publishers to list down the external stores username and password credential of a user who has permission to create and publish web app in that particular tenant stores with the help of tenant store feature any user from any tenant can browse other tenants and access the web application without any restriction in order to control the web app access by tenant users we have introduced feature called subscription availability this feature introduces three kind of subscription availability option for a web app web app creator can choose the appropriate option when creating the web app let's look into what are those three options the first one is current tenant only if this option is selected only users of tenants where the application 
is actually created can be subscribed and accessed. If we select the option all tenants, allow all tenants, users from all tenants can access this particular app. If we select the specific tenants, users of the tenants specify when creating the web app and the users of the current tenant can subscribe and, the, and access. We can understand this in detail through the demo. So we will discuss about the next feature which is self sign up for tenants. In the previous release, we had the self sign up feature for only super tenant. With this release, self sign up feature is available for all tenants. By default, this feature is disabled for tenants and enabled for super tenant. In order to enable this feature for tenants, you need to add the following configuration. Log into management console as tenant admin, browse and open the sign up config file. They are at the configuration to enable the self sign up. Let me explain the elements of the configuration. Enable self sign up. Set this value as true to enable the self sign up. Sign up domain specifies whether user should be added to primary or secondary user store. Username and password of the admin user of the tenant. Sign up roles. Roles defined under this element will be added to sign up user. Okay, now we will go through a demo and see how these new features are working in the new release. Okay, so the first we will look into the feature public store. So if there are no tenants, when a user browse the app store, he will be given the store of the carbon super tenant. In this case, I don't have configured any tenants, so I can see the carbon super tenants user store. So let me go and add a new tenant. Go to the management console and login. Let me go to the management console and login as the super admin. Select the configuration tab. There you can see the uh, option to add new tenant. So let's say I want to create a tenant for marketing.com. So give a domain name called mk.com and give a first name for the admin user, let's say admin. And the last name for the admin user, let's say admin. And admin username as an admin. And admin password. And repeat the password. And give the admin users email ID. So as you can see, we have successfully created a new tenant called mk.com and it is in the active state. I have already created some other tenants which are in non-active state. So if uh, now I have an active tenant. So if I go back to the app store and browse it, I will get the public store page where all the active tenants as well as the carbon super tenant stores are available so let me go back and enable all the tenants that i have already created let's refresh the page okay as you can see all the active tenants are appears in the public store so as an anonymous user i can go into each individual tenant store and browse the all public caps for example, if I go to the hr.com, all the public cap uh, published by the hr.com will be available here. So if I want to go to an engineering.com, I have to come back to the public store. From there, I can go to the engineering.com tenant store. So there I can find the apps related to engineering users. So if I want to access an app, app from the hr.com as a user from the engineering.com first i want to go to the engineering.com and log in as a user of the engineering
once I logged in I should go back to the public store from there I have to select the hr.com and from there I can access the app of the hr.com so what will happen if I try to directly log into the hr.com using the credentials of engineering.com let's try it I'm going to hr.com and I am logging as a user of engineering.com in this case I am getting the message no privilege to access this domain because I have given the incorrect details that means I have given the credentials of some other tenant to hr.com so okay so next we are going to see the the second feature published to external store if you if you go to the hr.com as you can see the pay slip app this is an app which which uh, which is important to all the employees across the all the tenants so it's good it would be better if the hr publisher can publish this up to all the uh, tenant stores so for example if i am an engineering user and I am browsing the engineering store if that app is displayed here it is easy for me to access that app to find that app and access the actual app so this can be done through the uh, public to external store feature so let me uh, show how to configure external stores to the HR dot HR uh, tenant so go to the management console and log in as the HR admin Then from the main tab, select the resource and browse, system, governance, AppPMGT, application data and here you can find the configuration file of external app stores. So in this case I have already added two stores as external stores to HR tenant store. As you can see I have added the engineering store and the sales store. Thus, you can add one or many external store for a particular for a particular tenant store. So, let's go back uh, to the publisher and try to publish this app to the other store, tenant stores as well. So, I'm going to the publisher app. I'm going to log in to the hr.com. Okay. Here I have the pay slips before app which is already published. So if I select it will go to the overview page of that. So here you can find a tab called external stores. Once you clicked it, it will display all the external stores that we configured in the configuration. So if I want to publish this app to these external stores, I should select those external stores and save. Okay now we have successfully published to the app so uh, let me go to the store and show you how this app will be displayed there so if i go to the publish store i have pushed this uh, apps to the sales.com as well as engineering.com so if i go to the sales.com yes i can see that app with the ribbon called advertise same as let's go and see in the engineering.com yes here also I have seen that app as with the label of uh, ribbon so in order to access this app I should first log into the store let me log in okay now I have logged in as you can see this is an advertised app but the actual app is published in the hr.com so as you can see in the URL we are in the engineering domain so once I click this will redirect to the hr.com let me to click the app okay now I have come to the overview page of the app where it is in the hr.com as you can see in the URL now we are in the hr.com so with this feature any user can easily add, uh, browse an app from their own tenant stores so Next, we will look into the other feature which is subscription control across the tenants. When we create a web app, 
we can add three kind of subscription option to a web app let me show by logging into the publisher let me log into the publisher of hr domain when we add a new app under the policies under the global policies there is an option called subscription availability here we have three options one is current tenant only if we select this option by default this one will be selected so in this case only the users from this tenant that means the hr tenant can access this web app if i select allow all option the users from any tenants can just access subscribe and access this app if I select specific tenants, I can specify the tenant names. Example, engineering.com or sales.com with comma separated values. So, users from the engineering.com, sales.com and, and the hr.com which is the current tenant can access this web app. I have already created four apps where Paislip Viewer is uh, set the option allow all tenants and Kanga Travel Expense Management is set the specific tenant options where I have mentioned the sales.com as the specific tenant and my profile and the OPD clients have the current tenant option. So if we go to the store and if I uh, try to browse all four all three all four apps as an engineering user let's see how it will be appear to me let me log in first go to the public store from there go to the HR store so if I select the payslip viewer I am able to subscribe to that app and access that app with this URL If I go to OPD Climbs, I don't see the subscribe me option because this app was created with the option current tenant only. If I go to Conquer Travel app, here also I don't see any subscribe me button available because this one was created with specified specific tenants and only sales tenants are allowed to subscribe. So as a use of admin, as use of engineering so I will not be able to access this so let me to let me to go as a use of a sales dot com okay go to the public store and select HR dot com and if I select the payslip viewer I can see the subscribe me because this has allow all option if I go to OPD clamps I don't have the button available because this one is set to current tenant only but if I go to Kanka travel expense I see the subscribe me option because uh, the sales.com is specified as a speci uh, tenant for this app so if I log in as a user from of a hr.com, let's see how the apps will be appear. Okay. As you can see now I have the subscription option to the pay slips viewer. And I have the subscription of her option to the OPD climbs and also I have the subscription of to the Kankar travel expense so thus we can control the subscription availability across the tenants so finally we will look into the our other feature that self sign up by default self sign up is enabled to carbon super users so if you go to the super user store you can see the register button here using this register button you can sign up to the store but if I go to the other tenant say hr.com 
by default i have enabled i have uh, configured the hr.com to be also enable the self sign up but if you go to the some other store like let's say sales.com it is by this by default it's disabled so let me let me show how i have configured hr.com to enable the self sign up so login as the admin of hr.com go to the main tab and from there browse the self sign up configuration file system governance appmgt application data and sign up configuration and their edit text i have already configured hr tenant store to have the self sign up enabled so if you can see in the self enable sign up i have added it as a true so and i have given the needed credentials to that and define some roles so hr uh, tenant store have the self sign up enabled if you make it to fold it will get disabled so that's the end of the demo so if i conclude what we have done in the demonstration first we look into the first we look into the public store feature then after that we look into the how public to external stores thereafter we look into the feature subscription control across the tenants and finally we look into the self sign up for tenants